Yellow. Yellow. We're back. Yes. Live from New York City. It's Comicsology <laughs> Live. <laughs> what an original name we have for this show. Yeah. Big week this week in comic books. Mm-hmm. Big week. Big week. week. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Comicsology Live where we get together in a secret bunker studio and talk about the books that we read this week. Maybe we'll get into some Nia's. Some comic book Nia's. Uh, maybe we'll talk about Star Wars in the least spoilery way possible. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. People like Star Wars, I think. Well, we know, in fact, that most people, not most people, some people Half do the not. internet hated The Last Jedi. That's stupid. Those Star Wars nerds. I consider myself a nerd, I can say that. Star Wars nerd. I would say so. You'd say that about me regardless. Because you are just a super weirdo. All right. Hello, Shall Mike. we get into it? Let's get into it right now. Comixology Live. The news. <laughs> <laughs> Let's in the news? get into the news. So this caused kind of a stir of excitement around the office. Really? Uh, the Flash is going to get his own Lego movie. The Flash? The Flash. Really? Yes. I hope it's better than the Batman Lego movie. Yes, me too. Because I didn't like that one that much. It was okay, but it's like, I didn't have the charm, I think, of the original Lego movie. Like, I feel like the Batman characters in that movie were, like, way funnier than they were in their own movie. Confirm. Yeah. I can confirm that. Yeah. Um, so. There's also a Flash regular movie. Isn't that dude, Ezra, getting his own movie, too? I don't know. I don't like it's him, It's going to be though. Flashpoint. I'm not... People loved him in that movie. I'm not his biggest fan. People loved him. I didn't like him. That much. I don't like him at all. He <laughs> creeps me out. He's a little weaselly. His personality is is that of a weasel. Yes. A human weasel. I would not trust. I would not like trust him with anything of mine. Let alone a weasel. Right. <laughs> like Hezra, watch my computer for a second. <laughs> like he would just steal it. What's, obviously. What scenario would you be in where Ezra would need to watch your computer? Do you think? Hopefully not in any, because I don't want to. Yeah. Like I wouldn't want to be this close to him. No, neither would I. Freaks me out, man. What else? Um, Garth Ennis's The Boys is getting a uh, Amazon Prime show. Amazon Prime? Yeah. Look at that. An OG Amazon Prime show. Keep it in the family. Yeah. Have you ever read The Boys? It's pretty violent. I haven't. It's like... Is that um, hyper-violent or just It's hyper-violent, I would think. But it's like dark humor violent. Okay. If I recall correctly, it's like a group of people that keep superheroes in check. Because they're just kind of doing their own thing. The yeah. Boys. That's like their team. Um... And it gets wild. <laughs> <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> people love it. There's a... Just people love it. I'm sure they do. <laughs> they do, obviously, because Amazon, our dear family at Amazon... Picked it up. That's how good it is. The fam. We'll see them at Christmas. The Amazon fam. The Amazon Christmas what family. What up, Amazon fam? <laughs> We'd say as we come in holding the turkey. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so also there are some, uh, cameos in, um, The Last Jedi. No. One of them being Tom Hardy, which was kind of, like, on the DL. The other ones were, like, sort of people knew about, but apparently Tom Hardy was in it as a stormtrooper. Really? Yeah. Were you- Word on the street. <laughs> this should be the segment name. Word on the street is. <laughs> Did you see, uh, people uncovered, like, his MySpace before? Tom Hardy's? Yeah. Oh my god. Is it amazing? It's like him posting selfies like shirtless or like he's wearing, you know, with like MySpace photos. He got, he was heavy into drugs. You know what? That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> you know? Not at all. Never heard of him, Jose. Jose, do you want to get banned right now? You're about to get banned. You have three seconds to turn <laughs> yourself around. <laughs> three seconds to comply. <laughs> Tom Hardy's going to be Venom in that new movie. I don't, Tom Hardy can be whatever he wants. I'll accept him for whatever. Agreed. I don't care. I just like to look at his face. Me too. And his body. And his bod. <laughs> <laughs> what else is Speaking the word of the bod, Oh, look out. Should we talk about uh, some Kylo Ren bod? Kylo Ren hot bod. How about that scene? This is not spoilery. We'll, it's not spoilery. Are... All you get to do, all we'll tell you is that you get to see Kylo Ren with his shirt off. And he is swole. He's... He's got it going on. I think he must have been in the gym for a while. 
a long time. I was kind of shocked. I was I was gasping. I, I was just like, whoa. Yeah, I saw my you. Word. I saw you like down the aisle. You like fell out of and your seat. I had to seat. like go get some water and you like. Were, cool. <laughs> you were like hoping no one saw you slide out of your seat, and then you got back in. Right. It took me a second. I love that scene. I love the Same. whole movie. I did too. There's a lot of haters out there, but if you're a hater, just ban yourself. Just stop. Just turn it off. If uh, if you watch the Last Jedi. Let us know what you thought in the comments, as spoiler-free as possible. As spoiler-free. Just say you loved it or you liked it a lot. Don't say anything don't, else about it. If you it. have nothing nice to say, don't say Just it at all. Just get out. Just get out. Now. Get out. <laughs> Is that what I sound like? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a freak. Um, Let's move on to... Comics? New comics. Okay. I'll, can I go first? You know what? Please. Age before beauty. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, ah. X-Men Grand Design. You know, I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a big X-Men fan. Huge X-Men fan. <laughs> I don't know what noise you just made, but it was dynamite. Uh, X-Men Grand Design comes from Ed Piscor, who de, uh, did Hip Hop Family Tree, where he tried to consolidate yes. like the entire history of hip hop in that graphic is novel. That's awesome. It's, yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's beautiful. I don't. I'm not a big hip hop guy. I'm not sure if you know that about me. Uh, it's not my vibe. <laughs> but I loved Hip Hop Family Tree. We actually interviewed him at New York Comic Con. He's a cool dude. So, X Men, there's been an X Men comic for many decades. What he tries to do here is what he did in. Um, oh, wow, I didn't know it was printed on this paper. Wow. Old school paper. He tries to encapsulate decades of X Men comics into a format like he did for Hip Hop Family Tree. So, he starts all the way at the beginning. Uh, were to the first mutant, allegedly Namar. Um, and he eventually goes through the entire history of the X-Men in an e easily digestible format. Like, this is... Um, I, I considered Hip Hop Family Tree to be, like, educational, more so than entertainment value. It's both. Um, like, they could, like, just give it out in schools, and you could learn more about hip hop than, you know, anywhere else. Right. And this is the same thing. You learn so much about the X-Men. I'm a huge X-Men fan. I loved it. That's my review. Can they put that on the back of the trade? No. All right. I'm going to show my computer, too, because it's making that hissing yeah. sound. <laughs> I'm getting hot just being It's probably nice making people it. nervous on edge. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What did you read? Um, Assassinistas. Whoa. From an, um, an imprint of IDW called Black Crown, which if I was a princess, I would choose to wear a black crown. Interesting. Absolutely. So this is the first issue, and it's really cool. Uh, Josh actually recommended that I read this, and I was like, you know what? You're right. Our email. Assass are. An assassinista seems like something in a past life that I would want to be. I a lady might be assassin. That now. Yeah, for sure. Electro's like you know your girl. my best friend. Like your biff. Exactly. So this this uh, particular issue is called Dominic Prince Price and the Semester Abroad. So Dominic Price is the son of one of the assassins. And he's just trying to like you know, go to college, get by, has a boyfriend. Yeah. His mom doesn't know that he's gay, but we've all been there. We've all been there. And uh, she, he like, she doesn't pay his tuition, and he's just like, "Mom, where's the money for my tuition?" They're like, "I'm not even on like the roster for my classes." So apparently, she uses this money to like go buy weapons, like a ton of like black market weapons, because she wants to get back in the biz. Whoa. So. He can't go to school because his tuition's, you know, not covered. So he brings his boyfriend home, and she's like, all right, you guys want to help me kill some people? And that's how it all starts. Jeez, I like yeah. this book. It's pretty cool. Assassinistas. Assassinistas. Okay, I'm into it. So I'm hoping some killing starts happening soon, you know? Brandon says Assassinistas was on his list this week as well. You should check it out, Brandon. Uh, Matt calls himself Slim as a nod to Slim Summer's true story, Mikey P says. That's I actually, think it's, it's uh, true, Slim Shady. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Mikey P knows that's not true. It was because I wasn't so slim in school. That's what people called me. Were you rotund? I was larger. <laughs> Larry, uh, old school paper. You mean newsprint? Yeah, I guess you could call it newsprint, It's Larry. like a little thicker. It's thicker than newsprint, so take that. Maybe the newsprint of old. Ye old. 1920s newsprint. newsprint. Uh, let's briefly. Mike is late. Don't apologize for being late, Mike. It's okay. We dark, forgive you. Dark Knights Metal. 
<laughs> this is the big one from DC that everyone's talking about. No one knows exactly what's going on, but they love it anyway. You and know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. No. I'm reading this book. I love what I'm seeing. I love what I'm reading. And Batman has been through the ringer. If I could briefly show you a photograph of Bruce Wayne. He's been through ye old... How many pages do I have to turn to get Batman? How many times I'm, do you I'm, see I'm ye, I'm ye old? <laughs> here, here, here he is. He's old and decrepit, is what I'm trying to say. He's an old man. He's like my age. Right. And uh, him and Superman are like, we gotta figure this out. It's getting real bad right now. And then on the cover, you can see Dream. Not on this cover, but the other cover, Dream shows up from Sandman. Yeah. And he's like, bros... I can't help you. I can't get involved, but I can tell you where you can get some more of that fancy metal you need. He doesn't talk like that, but uh, no, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He's a little more eloquent. Uh, <laughs> but I'm all in. I don't know what the heck's going on in this book. I love it though. Great. Thank you. All right, here we go. <laughs> Aftershock number one, Backways. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. And this book is. I think I can best describe it as. If Alice in Wonderland, like the world where, you know, you can turn a corner and be at a tea party, you can turn a corner and be at, you know, the Red Queen's, whatever, rose croquet gathering. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that where it's like, um, but it's more involved around magic and witchcraft and like some demon-y things and it's really, really cool. I love witchcraft. Uh, same. So like this is, you know, just going through like a portal. Whoa. She's going crazy right there. She sure is. So it's about this girl um, who loses her friend. And her mom's like, she's gone. It's your fault that she's gone, you know? And her friend, who obviously like knows more of the backstory than her mom does about like alternate dimensions, um, is like, I'll help you find her. Just like, let me help you find her. So then like some of these creatures show up and um, they're just like on this journey. And there's this mean woman that's really cool. Can you do the mom's voice one more time? No, you help. You killed her. So this is like basically like this chick here is like the white rabbit. Mm. So she's following her around to try to find her friend Sylvia. Well, I hope that, I hope she finds her. And yeah, there's some spooky stuff that happens. All these dimensions, like through space and time. It's cool. I feel like a trendsetter with all these number one issues. I am the hipper one of us. <laughs> Obviously. You don't follow trends, you set them. Exactly. Um, look at this. Lenticular. Lenticular cover for Marvel 2-in-1 Thing in the Human Torch. You may have heard that Disney bought Fox. Those rumors, they're, mm. they're real. They're true. Uh, so Chip Zdarsky. That smells funny. And Jimmy. Doesn't it? It does smell a little funk. Ooh. It's not newsprint. That's Larry. for sure. Uh, this, so the Marvel 2 on one was an old school title that they're bringing back. Uh, Z Chip Zdarsky writes it. He's one of my favorite writers. Marvel 2 on one essentially, the thing is kind of uh, on his own since Reed Richards and Mrs. Fantastic uh, went missing pretty much all you need to know. So it's just The Thing and Ben Grimm. They have they haven't even had a comic book in forever. Uh, so Spider-Man tells Ben uh, Grimm, he's like, you need to look out for that human torch. He's kind of depressed. You should help him out. Yeah. And uh, through happenstance, Dr. Doom reappears and says... Uh, I love Dr. Doom. Hey, uh, Thing, I found this thing while searching through the, your old warehouse headquarters. Oops. And I think it's for you. And it's a message from Mr. Fantastic. He's like, should I ever die? Listen to this message. And he tells Ben something that makes him want to rejoin the Human Torch and continue searching the galaxy. Whoa. It was very good, first issue. I loved it. Jimmy Chung's art is, like, unreal. He's not That's someone who I would... That's pretty good. Yeah, I wouldn't call him a monthly artist. That's This is, like, art that I would presume he spent three months making. Mm. Um, it's so detailed and so gorgeous. I, I, I don't think I've ever really liked reading Fantastic Four books. But you should read this book. Read it. Should we continue on that? I always pick the weird books, don't I? Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So this one I was really excited about. I found out this was coming out this week, last week, and it's Hellboy Krampus Nacht. You said Krampus like a hundred times in the last week. Because Krampus never is my homeboy. Like <laughs> so a little backstory about Krampus. Oh boy. Basically, he is the anti Saint Nicholas. So if you're bad, like Krampus will come snatch you up and put you in his like really creepy backpack and like take you away from your family. Forever? Allegedly. Jeez Louise. <laughs> So, like, I guess that's a good way to make your kids good during Christmas time. Yeah, kids, if you're watching. So, if you're, you know, a dad or a mom, and you're looking for ways that's a little bit cooler than Elf on a Shelf, I would use Krampus. Krampus, my God. My, ki really my kids, wherever they are. <laughs> <laughs> Not me yet. <laughs> Krampus will bef definitely be part of the Christmas tradition. So, does, is Hellboy, like, hunting him down or so something? So, Hellboy, you know, like... Help mostly Hellboy's just like you know minding his old business and it's sort of like these things always like happen upon him mm. so he's in the woods just doing Hellboy stuff walking around like with his trench coat on and this like spirit woman's like help me help me and he's like whoa wait what and then she like drops this like little kid's toy on the ground and he picks it up he's like dude where'd you go and then he happens upon this like super creepy old man that's like a human, I don't know, version of Krampus, and then he turns into Krampus. that scare you? <laughs> yeah. Don't do that again. And in this version of the Krampus tale, the children, like, they get murdered. So it's not just, like, you're bad. Like, you're gone. Oh my gosh. This so is real. So Hellboy saves the day. He doesn't, you know, bring the kids back to life, but... Oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> He gives them a proper burial. Is this a one shot? Or is it, it is like a, a one shot. Oh, okay. Like and those. it's, well, here's Whoa. a scary version of Krampus. Look at this. Look at this here with this gross tongue Ugh. out. So that's another thing about Krampus. He has this like weird like lizard dragon tongue. Oh, speaking of which, I think I saw a Krampus. Um, wait, what's Brandon saying? Even knowing you never use Twitter, you seem to be selecting my weekly picks <laughs> too. Uh, that's a fact. I think it, these are like all his picks this morning. But I went to an uh, ice skating rink in Philadelphia this weekend. Krampus was there. And there was uh, Franklin Fountain is like a upscale hipster ice cream shop. And they had a Krampus there next to it. Krampus is back. Honestly, I think the first time I heard about him was like maybe four or five years ago. And I was like, I don't know. I, my family didn't obviously <laughs> didn't want to scare the S out of me. <laughs> Good for them. So Krampus never was around. But he's like becoming super popular, popular again. Like, I see, like, Christmas sweaters with Krampus on them and, you know, whatever. But this book is awesome. It's a one-shot. If you really want to get in the holiday spirit, check this out. You know the dessert that I got at the, uh... <laughs> Please, you know what, I've been... I, I was going to ask, but it's silly me. I know I you were. How I know rude. Everyone, how rude. <laughs> I know everyone's curious about what dessert I got, but... What did you get? <laughs> I got two waffles, and they put ice cream on top of the waffle, hot caramel... And then they put the waffle on top. So it's I had like a, a waffle sand sand sandwich. sandwich. Sammy. It was the best dessert I've ever had. I actually went up to the people That like is making me salivate. That sounds so Check good. Check out my Instagram for the photo of it. I went to them afterward. I was like, this is the best dessert I've ever had in my life. I Did you like shake that. their hands? I gave him a pound. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, thanks, man. Like you so much. Uh, we're running out of tape. What should we talk about next? Oh, I think date? you know what I want to talk about. The big old. The big old date night in the DCU. Double date. Da, 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 variant do, color do, we do, have do, here. Do. Um, Batman, I didn't read the issue before this. Me, actually, did I? It was the first part of their double date, I think. Mm. Everyone loved that issue. but So we jumped in on this one. Batman and Catwoman are going on a double date with Lois Lane and Superman. We all know who the better couple is. We do. We're not going to say it. But Just they're on the it. cover. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> And honestly, I think it's cool how they did it, though, how it's like, all right, we're going to a carnival and they're like, they show up in their civilian clothes, you know, Civvies. and then the guy's like, uh, it's superhero night. You can't get in. And they're like, really? Dude? <laughs> <laughs> really? Did. So they go home and just put their stuff on. And it's awesome. Well, yeah, they Obviously, Lois costumes. just wears like a tight dress because she's like not cool enough to have a costume. Or, well, at, at the onset, I thought they were going to like. Because they even say, like, should we just wear our costumes? And, like, what if anyone recognizes that it's us? Yeah. So they switch. So Bruce is dressed as Superman. Yeah. 
and you know vice versa. So everyone's wearing their counterpart. I thought it was amazing. Like Tom King can just make these super hilarious and touching like one shot stories. Right, because it's cool as it's like they're doing like a normal activity. They're going to like a fair mm -hmm. and playing games, but it's like they're all superheroes at the same time, except Lois Lane. And then um, I think we said this last week or I said it a couple weeks ago, but it, he's like the opposite of Scott Snyder's Batman, but that's not a dig. They're both like right. really good at like Scott Snyder can do dark Batman. Tom King can do like really strong, funny Batman. He has like, like emotional. funny, emotional, romantic Batman. Remember that the roof? Are you kidding me? I'm gonna I talk mean, about that in my ten spot part. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a touching scene with Lois and the cat. You know, talking about how um, Catwoman's getting married, and they're talking about like how she feels about that. She's so young. Um, Is she? I mean, I don't really know. She could be forty. Who knows? 50, Maybe 60. 60 20. That woman's been around for a long time. She has been. Uh, but this is a great issue. Batman 37, get 36. I mean, you can really just start from wherever. It's like a charming, run. refreshing sort of version, I think. So what would we get with $10 this week? Let me open the laptop. We had our own cash money. Let us know bucks. what you'd get with $10. Oh, yeah. Let us know what you'd get. That's um, actually a good point. Thank you. I would get, uh, I, I stuck with DC just because there's like the most insane DC sale ever going on. We have um, a lot of great sales going on, but this sale is like, I think it's like 1,600 trades or something like that. It's, it's like silly. insane. It's silly. Sorry. Uh, don't touch me. <laughs> I just touched your <laughs> leg back. So. Um, I was going to get Batman Black Mirror, which I don't think we talked about on the show. Did I talk about Black Mirror last two weeks ago? I, we talked about it somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Um, but if I did, I'm sorry. Black Mirror is that Scott Snyder Batman that I was talking about where it's super dark and he this the main plot is that Commissioner Gordon's son is back in town and he's got like this weird creepy dark past where he oh, could be a psychopath right. and ba Babs is like eh, yeah, I don't we were, know yeah she always thought that he did like some really messed up things at a school he was in and Commissioner Gordon always gave him the benefit of the doubt and he's right. back in town and now he's forced to confront maybe my son is a psychopath murderer and it's like really dark and amazing yeah. So my first pick would be Animosity Volume 1, which is six ninety nine. I know, it's kind of a lot. But um, I heard a lot of good things about this, and I haven't read it, and it seems like something I would like. Really? I so love Animosity. It's like what? Like the animals the, are helping people like have a revolution? No, There's the like animals what? revolt against humans. Like, something happens where, like, animals start talking, and they start, like, either destroying their master. Isn't there a or, movie like that? Um, I don't know. Me either. But yeah, the, the first issue it seems like a familiar plot though. is r super good uh, because it just shows like the switch being flipped on the animals and like they show, you know, like six panel grid of like all the animals reacting to being sentient and can talk. And one of them is like a whale who starts talking to like her trainer and he's like, I've always been in love with you. <laughs> but then there's obviously the opposite where like there's not... Not every animal is happy with how they've been treated, and they revolt, and right. it goes really south. Fast. Humans really don't treat animals that well. Humans are bad. That's true. Um, what's my other one? Night business. Oh, what's the one after that? How the come on? I moved the mouse here. This Death is... of soups. Death of Superman. All right, hold on. Let me unlock this. Thank God, no one can see my password. Um, oh, Death of Superman would be password. my second <laughs> one, um, which is. One of the books I started reading when I was younger, and, like, this was the first time that, like, comics did, like, a mainstream thing, and everyone's like, oh, Superman's dying in comics, I better buy these books, because right. they're going to be worth something. And it's the trade, uh, it's several hundred pages, it's only five bucks, so this is my other ten, uh, half of my ten. Um, I love the, the Death of Superman comics. Yeah. you never seen those, right? No. Oh, my I'm a God. little young. They're timeless. Timeless. <laughs> Doomsday. Did you ever read We Three? Oh, I love We Three. That one's really good. That one is when um, Grant Morrison did that one. It's like a three issue miniseries where these a dog, a cat, and a bunny, I think, were like experimented on and they were like able to operate these machines, but they get loose and they're on the run. Oh, shit. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> that was. <laughs> um, but Death of Superman is a yeah. classic, and that uh, was my other one. Um, so my second one would be from our Marvel sale that's going on right now, Electra Volume One Bloodlines. Whoa, Electra. The Del Mundo. 
oh my masterpiece. Gosh. Del Mundo is a master. He's another guy that I don't think can do monthly books, but his covers are Well, like, because it probably takes him like nine takes years forever. to do that. Yeah. But it's like the interior art is just like, I've never seen mm. anything like that in my entire yeah. life. He did Winter Soldier too, right? I yeah. Think. It's just so, so good. I remember first reading that. I was just like, I wish it went on forever, like, honestly. You were like, gee, dang. Yeah. Why does this have to end? <laughs> uh, is that yeah. all your $10, $10? Oh, I got 99 cents left. So, I would buy Batman number 15, the Rebirth one, because it's part three of Rooftops, where Batman and Catwoman get it on. On a roof. On a roof. Diamonds are involved. It's like the whole issue. I think that little story arc is like... I was just like, you know what? I'm so happy they're finally together. It was a... Uh, you wouldn't think that just a, an issue or several issues of yeah. Batman and Catwoman just, like, being in love on a roof would be good. It was good. so good. But it was amazing. We had, like, the double-page spread hung up like, in this I, room for, I, I like, I really feel months. like I might be around here still, where I just, like, had the page open. I was like, this is what life is all about. It is. It is. Uh, what's on your future list? What's coming out soon? Do you have anything? No, we didn't, we, didn't, <laughs> didn't. we didn't do that one. Well, we're running out of time anyway. We have to get back we to work. We are, that. yeah. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. Yes, don't let Krampus get you, so be good. Last thing we'll say is that we're currently running a sweepstakes on uh, our Twitter account. Yes. Uh, let me pull it up as we speak. We're doing an 11 by 14 uh, piece of artwork from, uh, let's see, Marley's Ghost which is available in CU. And so if you're looking for a Christmas Carol uh, story, it's that time of the year. It's yeah. time to reread it. You can if you're subscribed mm -hmm. to CU. It's actually from Gideon Kendall. Well, let me see if I can pull it up to show the piece of art. But if you want to see what the piece of art is, obviously this kind of sucks. I'm looking at my phone. Go to our Comixology Twitter account because it's the pinned tweet. Uh, so all, pretty much all you have to do is follow and retweet for a chance to win the original piece of art from Gideon. It's really gorgeous. Yep, yeah, it is really I nice. love the story too. Who doesn't? It's a classic tale. Charles Dickens. You know? I love Charles Dickens. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck. Chuck. Call him, call Chuck. Him. I call him Chucky Dick. Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So go and to our Comixology. Might not be back next go week because we're probably banned. <laughs> follow Chucky our Dick. Twitter account and retweet the, the pin tweet for your chance to win a piece of original art. And we'll never say Chucky Dick again. <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> we will see you next week. We'll see you next week if we still have jobs. Yep. Bye. Bye.